Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all the news from Star Citizen over the past week. My name is Mac, so let's get on with it. This week we get a new ship shape, keeping us up with the ships currently in the production pipeline. The Vulcan gets a Q&A, plus we get to see and hear more regarding the Reclaimer. So, kicking off as usual with calling all devs, first question being, will outposts always be this small or will they get more complex? Now they say basically yes, they will always stay at this sort of scale. They will have bigger locations like villages and cities, but outposts will always remain the same size. But do expect clusters of them, different variations of them, all in one area, rather than sort of just single units dotted around all the time. Next question is, how will player-to-player -player interdiction work? Will there be special ship equipment or a specific ship only? Now, they did say that special equipment, yes uh, and no. You can interrupt someone trying to jump by disrupting their quantum field around their ship. So, for example, if they take enough damage, they will not be able to jump. You won't see an Aurora disrupting an address, most likely. There will be dedicated interdiction tools. They are in the plans. The disruptor beams will do it quicker than weapons and dedicated ships for interdiction will have other bonuses to help. It is open to everyone, but better with the right equipment. So basically, you can you can stop someone if you deal enough damage. If you have tools on board, you will be able to do it quicker than using your weapons, but if you do have a dedicated ship, then that will be the sort of top tier stopping people from jumping. Pulling people out of quantum jump will require a device. You kind of like, the, the way they describe it is you chuck it out of your cargo hold, it will have a limited power supply, and a certain radius to capture and pull anything that enters. So in order to escape it, you need to exit the radius or destroy the, the device itself. Interdictors will be within the interdiction bubble as well themselves. So if you throw out a radius sort of interdiction device, you will have to be in it as well to try and capture these people. So it will be challenging, not always knowing what you're going to catch as well. Apparently it's sort of hit or miss what you will, like sort of fishing, you know, we randomly capture something, which will be interesting to see how that plays out. Anyway, the next question is regarding the server-side patches that we get, the sort of hot fixes since 3.1. Can we get patch notes? And they say not really because these pa these are not patches, the hot fixes. They're, just, they're not new features, they're just enhancing and bug fixing. Nothing really new for the players to test, so there's no real need. Second to last question, uh, what's the future about personal hangers? What's the next step? Now, they say that the focus last two years has been making them modular creating hangar pieces which are modular and incorporating them into the cities, being able to fly down into your own hangar is what they're looking for. They just say that later this year or maybe early next year, this will be the first release of major cities and the hangars are now in white box. Once signed off, they will start showing up on the roadmap and being incorporated into the cities. The new hangars will replace the current ones, which will get you sort of high tech, low tech. So even these hangars that we have now, they will change, unfortunately, because I am quite partial to them. So final question is to do with repair for 3.3, but there are no repair ships. How will it work when released? Now, they say, obviously, 3.2 has the salvage mechanic on the roadmap. Kind of stripping hull materials. Repair is pretty much the reverse of this, so it's using the shader tech. They said it will be likely a personal weapon with a backpack containing the repair materials, and you are on foot repairing using whatever device they give you. It's the same tech will likely be on the drones, so the repair will be real time, which is super cool. You'll see things adding to it where they lay the shader on it, whereas obviously when you're salvaging, you'll be stripping the layers and different variations. Quite a clever method, and I do like the fact it's in real time, so you'll feel like you're actually making progress rather than just hitting the same thing over and over again until it suddenly looks repaired. Anyway, that was Calling Old Devs, kind of short and sweet. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Some good questions and answers there. So around the verse this week was the monthly ship shape, which is always a good one to catch up with all the ships and the details onto where they are in production. First one was the Constellation Phoenix, which is now in the grey box modelling phase. The Hammerhead is in the grey box final approved interior stage, and the Hurricane and Avenger are in their final modelling surface tweak phase. Now we saw about the Reclaimer, which is just a beast. It is looking so incredible. I will do a separate video on this, just talking a bit further into what we saw. But they said they wanted to be an Ostromo-style feeling from the Alien films. They wanted to get across the, the idea of it being grimy and sweaty, so they had a lot of things looking a bit run down. It does look very cool, but it would be nice to have clean areas like habitation and so forth. They don't need to be so dirty. Uh, but it's broken into decks, which is what I really like, and it's accessible via a, a large sort of service elevator. I do hope there are stairs as well in case you lose power. But this is the first large salvage ship 
They need to work out how the claw will work and the process of taking the salvage and making it into saleable assets. The gameplay would involve finding a wreckage and then drawing that ship closer using the two tractor beams either side, close enough so that the claw can then reach it. And the claw operator is actually sat next to the pilot for better communication. He then breaks it down into pieces and then from there it goes into the grinders, which grind it into smaller pieces and then are fed into the, the sort of salvage containers for storage. It has two large sets of floodlights to help you sort of light up the area or the ship that you're working on. They did say that these not only help light the area, but it can be very intimidating, giving a real sense of presence as well. Now, apparently using it alone is going to be very difficult. So if you do have plans to just be your only person on the ship, it's not a good plan. Each station has a purpose. We obviously have the pilot. Next to him is the claw operator. Behind them is the two tractor beam operators. And then on another deck, there's the two drone operators. They do also have freestanding consoles. They've got a couple of uh, remote turret operators and scanning stations, plus a couple of engineering consoles as well. So there's lots of areas where crew can get involved and you can really earn your place on the ship. The processing room, they said, feels very dangerous. It looks gritty and menacing. The arms on the side are the landing gear, as you probably know, which are also VTOL thrusters. They compress. The compression of them really helps when they're landing because it adjusts, it sort of auto adjusts to the terrain, uh, making sure that it sits properly. It is a huge, huge ship. Um, I think they said that they've increased the landing pads again to help fit it on. It is currently in flight prep stage, just in the completing and hooking up everything phase. They did say that using the ship to salvage won't be workable in 3.1, but it should still be super fun to play. And I'm most hyped for this ship. I am so looking forward to playing with this in the game, doing some streams with it, walking around, doing like a tour on the interiors. Once it's all hooked up and working as a full mechanic as well, this is what I will probably be spending most of my time doing. Anyway, the Banu Merchantman, they say, has now completed the design review. It's in the interior concept design stage. The F8 Lightning is in the grey box surfacing. Chris Roberts was apparently not happy with the way the cockpit and the front wings looked, so they adjusted it a little bit to meet his specs and then it will continue on. The Vandal Blade, uh, it said that the cockpit was tricky due to the, both the human and the Vandal sizes being different. They needed to make it accessible via both, or for both, sorry. The interior has been reviewed and they're pushing on a really aggressive look. So to finish off with, they took a look at the Cyclone as well, the Tumbrel Cyclone. This is currently in the flight prep stage as well. They wanted us to be able to explore the ground, uh, hugging the terrain and just bouncing around. The racer version, they said, will almost have twice the, the speed of the Ursa Rover, and it will also have Nitros boosters to give it better sort of boost and speed. A good turning radius as well. On the tyres, it has little plates that fold up uh, on top of each other and then will unfold as you traverse, giving you much better traction. They did manage to get it in-game really quickly, pretty much done within a few weeks. It's now in the final stage like the Reclaimer, getting it sort of sound, the visual effects, the UI, all these little nitty gritty bits that don't take too long, but obviously need to be hooked up. Also looking like super fun sort of ship or vehicle to play with. I can imagine us having lots of ground buggy racing on streams and things. That's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you do follow me on Twitch, guys, and come and hang out with us all. Uh, to finish off with, they said that there's a St. Paddy's Day special. They're giving away uh, a Constellation Phoenix in kind of a screenshot contest. All you've got to do is send in your, your St. Patrick's Day celebrations in Star Citizen, make sure you're wearing green uh, and have a lot of fun with it. And they'll pick the best three of which will, like I say, will win a, a Constellation Phoenix. There's also a, a promo currently going for all the green ships. You can buy them in packs and a green Constellation Phoenix, which is looking a little unusual. So you can pick them up. Uh, I will talk about them a little later. And the Squadron 42 t-shirts, with them being green as well, are discounted now. So if you've always wanted one, now's a good time to pick one up. Anyway, that was ATV. Let's move on. So on this week's Reverse the Verse, it was just catching up with Jim Martin, who is a chap who has designed a lot of the original ships for Star Citizen. He concepted the, the original ships. And he just sat and spoke to him. He originally worked on Deep Space Nine, then moved on to Star Trek. He did work on The Matrix uh, and on Aliens, plus Starship Troopers. He designed some of the ships and the gear for that film as well. And he came on at the very beginning of Star Citizen. Before it was even announced, he concepted the Vandal Scythe, which we saw for the first time in the Squadron 42 demo. And then he's worked on uh, eight ships in total. So he's also responsible for creating the Freelancer, which has gone through a lot of iterations. The Cutlass, which was initially set to be a pirate ship, 
and then introduced the blue and the red. The Caterpillar, which is the long hauler. The Herald, which he was told needs to be small, compact, fast, and able to transmit info. After this, he moved on to the, the MISC hull series, but it was decided already that the cargo was to be external, so he kind of worked on that one. Then staying with MISC, he worked on the Endeavour, and the final ship that Jim is responsible for is the Drake Buccaneer. Now, because of this show, there wasn't a Q&A, so we didn't get any answers, any questions answered, sorry. So that's about it. But a big, huge thank you to Jim Martin, who, as I say, is responsible for all these cool ships, some initial ships that we, we saw before the game was even really produ uh, announced. It'll be interesting to see what other ships he comes up with. So we also had the Vulcan Q&A, where we asked the questions regarding the Aegis Vulcan, and they answer them for us. The first question was, will the drone stop responding if the Vulcan is too far away? And they say the drones will have a maximum control range, so as you approach that range, you will get a warning uh, with enough time to turn around. But if it exceeds that range, it will slow down and eventually stop until you get back within range. So a question after this is, how many small and medium fuel tanks can the Vulcan refill? Now, this is a difficult one to answer as the t fuel tanks on ships vary in size. So, for example, the Cutlass medium fuel tank is a different size to the Vanguard's medium fuel tank. The Vulcan is not designed to fully re uh, refuel ships. It is just to provide enough fuel so that they can get to a proper refueling station or refueling point. That said, they did expect the Vulcan to be able to fully fill 8 to 10 small fuel tanks, uh, 2 to 3 medium fuel tanks, and approximately half a large tank. Filling will require multiple trips with the drones, however, so keep that in mind. Third question is, will the drones be able to pick up materials from other places than the cribs on board the Vulcan? And they say the drones do have basic arms and clamps to carry items. Its main purpose is to take them from the cribs on the Vulcan, but there is, a, there is nothing stopping it from taking it from elsewhere, provided the drones can access those areas. So next question, how are the drones different to the standalone repair bot we get in 3.3? Now, the 3.3 repair bot will be completely different uh, item, likely much smaller. It's a personal drone rather than one for a ship. They just used an existing piece of concept art for this one, so that's why we, we're getting confused with it. Next question is, what is the largest ship the Vulcan will be able to fully refuel? And they say, again, it's hard to say for the same reason, but they'd expect it to be around a retaliator or a constellation size. That's the goal. If I have a spare weapon in my cargo bay, can the drone swap my ship weapon loadout? Now, it's not something that they had in mind, but the gameplay system should not prevent this from happening, so thumbs up with that one. Does the Vulcan draw its own fuel from the external fuel tank? Now, the external fuel tank, they say, contains two fuels. It's a hydrogen and quantum fuel. This is purely for transferring the uh, two other ships via the drones. The Vulcan has its own fuel tank. And the, the external fuel tank may look like one tank, but inside there is two separate ones, one for hydrogen and one for quantum fuel. Does the cargo bay elevator function as an airlock? And yes, it is. it does separate the cargo bay from the habitation area via an airlock. Can the Vulcan drones drain the fuel out of a friendly ship to refuel itself and continue refueling others? And they say, again, not something they had in mind for the ship, but the gameplay loop should allow it. Next question is, can the Vulcan itself refuel and buy fuel from the Starfarer? And yes, all ships will be fitted with a fuel port, uh, enabling them to transfer from one to the to another ship with the appropriate equipment such as the Starfarer's refueling boom or drones that can refuel. So question after this is that it states that the drones have a tug feature. How will this work? Now they did say that the drones should be able to push and pull something around uh, but it wouldn't allow you to have a fleet of drones dragging ships around from place to place. Maybe just moving in my opinion a small ship out into a better place maybe pulling it from an asteroid field so that you can get to it with your drones better. Potentially, we'll have to wait and see. How much space does the, the ammo take up? The standard, 12 standard cargo units doesn't sound like a lot for rearming. And they say that it depends on the ammo that you bring. The current volume of space is 2x2x3 two by two by standard cargo units, which works out around 20 cubic meters of space. The cargo room on the Vulcan is quite spacious, but if they feel it needs to have more capacity, then there's room to increase, which kind of makes this question, you know, begs the question, why not just increase it anyway? Anyway, uh, next question is, will the drones be able to work in a gravity well or an atmosphere? And yes, they will be able to function in Earth, like gravity and atmosphere, perfectly fine. How will I know what needs to be repaired and what, you know, where everything is on the ship that I am repairing? And they did say that they will discuss more in terms of repair and salvage gameplay when it's closer to being introduced, which I think is around 3.2. Can you give more details about how the drones will be controlled by the operator? 
is the next question, and they say that it's controlled from a support station in the cockpit of the Vulcan. Players or NPCs will then sit at the station and fly the drones from a first person's perspective via the screen. They will function and fly to all intents like any other ship in the game as well. Next question is, will we need a good stockpile of ship components to be able to effectively repair all ships? And they say, in short, yes, uh, the Vulcan can be played however you want it to be. So you could lurk near a shop to stock up on exact items needed by a customer, or you could fill your hold with generic items and, you know, allowing for a potentially quicker response, but maybe not the items that they suggest. Next question, can you operate drones via the Mobiglass? And they say there's not something they plan to support for the Vulcan drones. And final question, can we repair, rearm and refuel ground vehicles with the Vulcan? And yes, ground vehicles contain and conform to the same mechanics as ships do, so it's just on a smaller scale. Anyway, that was the Q&A for the Vulcan. Not sure if we'll see a part two. I wouldn't have thought so. We kind of cleared up a lot of stuff there, but we'll see. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Let's move on. Also this week, the new subscriber flare is revealed, which is the Legacy UEE Armor figurine. Galactic Guide brought us the TAL system. Bug Smashers looked into a Gladius landing gear issue. A new portfolio post highlighted Dumper's Depot. And with St. Patrick's Day just passing, we saw a new promotional sale for all the green colored ships, plus the green constellation Phoenix. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. It really helps me out. Big thank you to all my patrons as your monthly donations helps me to make videos like these, paying for software and hardware. Do follow the link below if you want to learn how to become a patron. Be sure to follow me over on Twitch and join us as we delve into the verse or just sit around chatting about the latest news. Follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with what I'm up to and Instagram for the hell of it. My name is Mac. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.